Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Convention Confessional. My name is Katie Hunt, and I'm here to guide you through the good, the bad, and the ugly of the convention world with a little help from my friends sometimes. Um, and you already know this friend. It's Ryan. He's back. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm great. Now, it's funny because usually I'm like, Ryan, think of stuff that you want to talk about. And you're like, okay. And then you show up with your stories. <laughs> but this time, I got a hold of you, and I was like, bitch, come on my show. I got something we got to talk about. <laughs> That's a, and it's a great topic. Uh, yeah, but before I think we so. before we get to it, I want to say congratulations. This is episode sixty five for you. You are cruising, baby. I know. I know. Well, I took like a month off, but I was moving, and I hate that I took a month off. I, you know what? You're allowed to do that. I mean, sometimes <laughs> on our show over at the Mutant Ages, we we've gone back and forth between being a weekly podcast, and then we're like, okay, we have so much going on. It has to be bi weekly for a couple months. But your listeners, as long as they love your show, they're going to come back. And I'm who doesn't love this show? I mean, Convention Conventional is like top tier. It's winning Oscars next year, even though it's not even a movie. Like, it's crazy. I didn't realize there was an Oscar of podcasts. <laughs> well, if I didn't somebody, realize I was nominated. <laughs> I mean, if there's going to be a Oscar for podcasts, of course you're going to have it because it's you, Katie Hunt. Oh, my God. Stop it. You're worse than Megan Jess. <laughs> Wait, is, oh, oh my god what were they saying no, no like no. Katie fucking hunt you know the whole spiel oh okay yeah well yeah. that's because we're we're like down on our knees worshiping you in a non-sexy way we're just like doing some like i don't know fifth element bullshit <laughs> <laughs> oh good fifth element bullshit that's exactly what i need <laughs> um, wait so tell me how was going back to anime boston after being on a con hi- hiatus for two entire years and then oh. hosting It was so good. I missed everybody. I missed doing things. I missed conventions. I miss being in front of a crowd of people. Like I'm lamenting it still. I'm in like super con funk because I I miss it. I want to come back. You know, you know, the cure for that is find another con. Nah, nah. (laughs) (laughs) I honestly, I I feel like that's so much now. It's like back when we were like in our twenties, it was like no more, more. And now that I'm totally agree, like old. I'm like, you know, one's good right now. <laughs> I, You know what? I always think about it. I'm like, would I go back to doing the convention stuff? And it's come down to if somebody asked me to come and MC their shows and they're like, we just need somebody to like host a bunch of stuff or like put on like one sh- one show, not the seven that we used to do at Kineticon. Mm. I'd be like, yeah, I'm down. But uh, you know, at some point for Anime Boston, I was talking to Lindsay and she was like, ask, like I was conversing with her about coming and working for the con and i it ultimately came down to it, i was like i just cannot sacrifice the time that i used to you know what i mean like mm-hmm. it's like i love doing cons but i can't right. do the full four days of working and just volunteering that time like i used to right. I, i've got too many i've got too many things i've got a, a podcast a youtube channel and a twitch and a photography business and i'm like i just i don't have the time like i used to so you know I, I don't know. I, I miss it as much as you miss it. Like I really, really do. And I miss the people and I miss like hosting like you did, but that's, I, I, I I'm with you. Like one's one's enough if you're going to do any at all. And it's like, right. you got to kind of, that's the thing. It's like you got one, you could put everything into it. Whereas if you do a couple, like we used to do it, you stretch yourself too thin. It's like, ah, oh God. I mean, I was proud of ourselves when we had the energy to do that. Like I remember there was like, that one year that Kineticon was late, it was like in late summer, almost going into the fall. And then a month later, after I did all the stuff at Haunted Graveyard, we went right into doing Nephi. And then one week later did AAC. And yeah, I was like, 2009. yeah, wasn't that crazy? How did we yeah. even do that? Because we hated ourselves. I, I mean, I definitely got the flu in the middle of it all because I obviously wasn't taking care of myself. But Because we were like 24 and it was like, whatever. But not even. Super- <laughs> not even like 23 we were like maybe 22 23 like just barely wow. drinking wow yeah i know we were like drinking freaking oh my god what was it called like it wasn't mike's hard lemonade it was the vodka but it wasn't smeared off i think Zima? we were drinking smeared off. yeah it's like stuff that was not really alcoholic it was mostly sugar right god mm-hmm. What a time. What a time. But I mean, we used to host a lot of stuff, Ryan. But the thing is, I, I don't miss that. people realize if they didn't see our shows in person was that we did a lot of behind the scenes stuff to get ready for the convention. Um, and yeah. what I'm talking about is all the videos we used to make. Yeah. I mean, I loved making those videos. So, oh, yeah. 
the advertisement videos, they were great. Like we made <laughs> full on movie trailers for our masquerade and our dating game and all of our game shows that we did. Yeah. Um, and I want to walk down memory lane because I love them. Ryan recently just put them all up on its own YouTube channel. Um, Cosplay Cabaret. Yep. Which I will be linking um, on the YouTube account. And when I post, um, you know, to advertise this episode. Uh, Cause I think everybody should get a good kick out of the fact that uh, we made whole asses of ourselves. We really made a lot of these videos though. It like, so I was trying to think about who pitched the idea first. And then I realized it wasn't really anyone for Kineticon. Like it wasn't, we weren't like sitting there be like, Oh, we want to create these videos. It's because we did Kineticon the musical and in Kineticon the musical three, we had made a bunch of videos that were integrated with it. And then, mm-hmm. That that was the year that we also got asked to be on staff. This was one year before we recruited you. Mm-hmm. And they were like, they didn't have us make any trailers that year. That wasn't the idea. But we definitely were like, oh, we were trying to come up with the intermission or not intermission. That that space during the masquerade that happens between the, like the end of the skits in the FMVs and then the judges coming out and picking their nominations because for some reason it took the judges like a full hour before that definitely has changed over the years. It's yeah. I, I think the grading system has changed in a way that makes more sense. But so we were trying to f- come up with filler. So we like would do shows and stuff. And I remember the first year we we're like, Oh, Hey, we can like give you a filler show because our friend Rachel and I were hosting the masquerade as team rocket. We had mm-hmm. taken over the masquerade. I think we talked about it on here. Mm-hmm. And I know in the middle of it, we did this whole video that was, the chicken fight from family guys. So we had Jess as Peter Griffin and Jim uh, O'Neill. He was playing the chicken and we Mm -hmm. had filmed this like whole chicken battle that like we filmed on Thursday night, like before the convention really started. (laughs) So we could utilize all the, you know, quote unquote sets. So basically the location and uh, film all over the place while there was some convention people there to make it look like the convention was happening because then at the end of this, like seven minute video, It was like they barreled into the auditorium and fought on stage. Mm -hmm. And it just, it was like a really cool component to have in our shows and during the skits and stuff. And I was like, we should utilize most of this. And also Maddie and I love making movies and we've been making movies since we were like 12, which you can watch on our Mutant Ages YouTube channel we react to. They're not good, but they're very funny to watch. Um, And it just kind of took off from there. And then... I, I don't know how we came up with the idea of trailers. It was probably my idea, honestly, because I'm obsessed with like going to movies and watching trailers in uh, the movie theater. And I'm like, mm-hmm. and today this, that freaking was it stranger things season four trailer dropped. And I watched that like seven times in a row because like, I'm obsessed with movie trailers. And so I was like, what if we make movie trailers? So that I, is how that started. I just remember like you asked me to be part of the team and then you're like, Hey, can you come to Connecticut? And I was like, ah, sure. <laughs> you're like, why? okay they're like but you have to bring your costumes we're gonna we're gonna film some stuff and i was like oh okay so i don't know how we managed that those costumes were not done at that point we're like can you just quickly finish it right the fuck now and i did (laughs) because back in the day it was like yeah sure i'll just call out of work and have somebody cover my shift to finish a costume because adulting didn't seem like a big deal when you're we had less right to pay then (laughs) right like i still lived at home it's fine i know same it was great um yeah, the, I wouldn't say that these were like the first couple of years. I don't think they were good, but they no. were definitely fun to watch. <laughs> and they were fun the to make. First couple of years, no, they were really the first fun. First couple of years that we did it, they were so much fun. But you could tell we just didn't care how we filmed them because, yeah. like, we were literally in someone's bedroom and there was no like framing it so that it could look <laughs> like some like teenage uh. girl's bedroom. <laughs> I know, and we were putting these up on YouTube before YouTube had any policies, because this is, like, the mid-2000s, right? So, like, YouTube was, like, a weird space that people weren't really posting in yet. Mm -hmm. So we could, like, post, like, a full Lady Gaga song in there and not get a uh, a, a copyright claim on it. (laughs) Oh, my God. Good times. Yeah. I guess that that was the first one. We did the Torchwood dating game. And, like, I don't know. You know what? The trailer is stupid. It's bad, but I love the ever loving shit out of it. <laughs> it was Love Game, right? We all danced yeah. around to Love Game. Right? Like all, it was all, it was, yeah, it were in Lindsay's house and we yeah, were all in Lindsay's dance- backyard in the rain dancing. <laughs> yeah. And everybody was like sexy versions of themselves, except for you, me, who was I, Jack and John. And we we're just I was sexy. Just John, I was just John Hart. He's already sexy, period. Like, flirts with anything. You're breathing. He wants you. 
Okay, no, but if you watch, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm putting it on you and watching the background. But I think my favorite part of this video is that it's zoomed in on your face, like all the way. Yep. And it's like because we're trying to make it look like it's just you in the room, and then it reveals that there's all these sexy girls around you. Yep. But like the camera work is so awful; it's like blurry oh. and zoomed off, and it's, it's like, like you're not even in the center of the frame, no. and it's like moving around, and it zooms out, and then it kind of realizes that like you're not supposed to have these other two characters in the shot yet. So then but it zooms back in like on we you. Did, we were like, well, good enough. <laughs> <laughs> One take only. <laughs> I want you. It's like, what? <laughs> I mean, it, this is like epitome of cosplay. Oh my God. It's like everybody being so sexy and grinding on each other for the entire thing. And it's like, I don't know how this got away with being put I anywhere. Think, I think my favorite part of the video, well, there's two actually, was when we were dancing in the living room. And again, it's just somebody's random living room. We did, this, we did this a lot. Most of the sets were people's living rooms <laughs> or backyards. <laughs> right. And then... um the end of it when you guys closed the door on me <laughs> that was great i mean i think it's a fun video of all the videos because i was trying to think when you asked me about this i'm like well what's my favorite one and i i gotta say it's probably that one i like it's it's not good but it was the most fun to shoot in my opinion mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. i think my second answer for that is the one we did for the glee dating game even though like it's like just kind of fun i felt like it was the most professionally shot of all <laughs> you think that one was yeah. Oh, the Glee one, yes. Yeah. I thought well, you meant okay. the Torchwood one. I was like, please don't. Okay, no, you mean Glee. That's fine, yes. <laughs> what, was your, what was your favorite video? I mean, well, I kind of want to go through them all first, and then we'll talk about what my favorite was. Let's do that. Let's do that. Because I, I change, wasn't involved with the Batman one. Right by the time we get to it. Okay, so that is number one is the Torchwood dating game. Right, which... and I wasn't involved in the Batman one, but I was involved in the Batman dating, and the mas- <laughs> Masquerade, Lord. Did the Batman one have, I don't think the Batman one had. It was just had... you involved in oh that's right oh you my were, god you were gordon, like Commissioner you gordon. Batman. i forgot about that okay i really enjoyed that one too we shot that and one at my mom's like, studio I my pencil i don't know what i want from lunch okay, wait. That, was a really, that was conceptually i think maddie's idea where she was like this is what's gonna happen batman's gonna keep on being called over by commissioner gordon to help him with like important things but it was like him trying to order Chinese food or like he drops something behind a desk and then it's like and eventually Batman's exhausted and he's leaving and Commissioner Gordon's like oh wait also the Joker's like taken over this convention center and has got to, has a bunch of people hostage <laughs> and Batman's like oh my god why didn't you start with that and I'm like I don't know <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one I forgot about that oh, and I got to be two-faced that was so much fun that was a fun show that was the one we all were like different characters from different batman eras yep i don't know i thought that was a good one too yeah um, i mean that was, that was a good one um but again you filmed it like in a staircase at like oh a random God. desk no okay, it's like at my mom's studio and she has like first of all she had an office that we mm-hmm. didn't use for some reason yeah. and <laughs> there were two entire dance studios we could have used and we're like what if we shut it on the staircase with this random desk and pretended it was commissioner gordon's office i don't know why I can, in retrospect, it's really funny that he would, like, Commissioner Gordon would have a freaking desk in the middle of a stairwell. And he's like, this is my office. I'm yeah. pretty important. <laughs> he's the commissioner. <laughs> but no, he wouldn't have an office. This is like Commissioner Gordon in the Harley Quinn TV show that was not out at that time. <laughs> oh. All right. That's so then the one. next year. Well, I, we got to do a shout out to Weakest Link because I do like that trailer. We weren't oh, in no, that Weakest one. Oh, no, Weakest Link was good. Also wasn't in that one, but like Weakest Link was a good trailer for that year. That, that was Maddie as Emma Frost being harassed by Halden as Deadpool. And that was just really funny. Well, Halden as Deadpool, period. Yeah, I mean, Halden as Deadpool was like a real treat that ended up existing in Kineticon for several years. So good. Yeah. Uh. So then what? So then it was the next year when we decided we were going to do Lady Gaga again. Right, and we it was were like, the Futurama year that we don't like to talk about. Yeah, I... Okay, wait, but that trailer's gone. I don't know why. Like, none of us have it. Well, because it's gone because like, I think it got taken down because we used another Lady Gaga song. And the oh. internet was like, nah, you're not allowed. Oh, I didn't even think about that. But it's like, Maddie doesn't even have, like, the original copy. Usually she has a file, or I have a file, and neither of us have it. It's just gone forever. Well, the, the trailer for it was I was at Brannigan, once again, surrounded by women. 
it was the same thing. We didn't change anything. Thing. We're just like, we're like, let's get all our friends to put on sexy cosplay <laughs> and like grind against Katie a second time. Except like this time we got like way more intense about it. Like we're like, no, we're going to go shoot it on the convention center stairs. And then we're going to put people in a bathtub and like Maddie's going to be in the bathtub. Remember? Okay. Do you remember how <laughs> you're already laughing? <laughs> Because I was there, right? And I was in that bathtub choking, remember? Oh my god. No, Maddie was like, I how how I don't know, what's the rating of this show that we're now oh, recording? It's e. Like, go for it. It's E. E's everybody. That's okay. Well, okay. okay. Well, it's as R as it gets. Okay, so R is the opposite end of that. So we'll just go with R. Um, yeah, but Maddie, she like was in the bathtub with you, and she's like, all I remember from that is she was like not in the shot because it was in one of those claw tubs and then like you were sitting in it and then suddenly she rises up from un- from inside there and then you point down and she nods and goes back down again <laughs> yep <laughs> but, but, but again but again the shot for what it was was a good shot still in someone's bathroom still a toilet <laughs> and a sink in the way of the shot <laughs> <laughs> okay but we, I remember we were watching the videos like the night before Kineticon started and we were just testing them and mm-hmm. like somebody saw one of the videos and went like running downstairs to tell the con chair that we had made like a sex video, even though that was not the case. But we had to like re Maddie had to re edit that video that night and be like, make it less sexy. And you were like throwing shit around and you were like, no, there needs to be even more sexy things in it. And we're going to do like full nudity and it's going to be like a full sex scene. And- I was so mad. I'm like, it's obviously a parody. Like there was nobody was naked. Nobody was like, if there was the one innuendo, which we thought was hysterical like it's honestly like whatever and like the rest of it like it wasn't even that bad i mean the worst part about it filming it was the fact that i was in that brand again and i was literally like flashing all of hartford connecticut while we were going up those stairs i mean luckily nobody was there because this is before hartford connecticut built their skywalk mm-hmm. so nobody was like hanging out at the convention center which they do now because it connects to everything right but i just i remember being so upset about it because i'm just like this is ridiculous it's literally a parody guys like get over it although also um halden in the bed as skeletor which is the i first forgot about that skeletor. too yeah oh my god the only reason that we have any of these recovered memories is because we have blooper reels which is honestly the best part of any of these videos that we made oh my god the blooper reels were so good well honestly like i'm surprised we got anything accomplished because we literally laughed at ourselves the entire time i know i know i remember with the the dating game that one we were just talking about where we were on the stairs and you guys couldn't get the moves right for bad romance like you had them but everyone else was just like trying to copy you and kind of tripping over each other. And then we just like left it. <laughs> yep. Yep. And Lindsay was in the back as Pepper Potts with the boombox. Yeah. Well, we had no other way to get the boombox in there. So. Right. <laughs> but that was also the Carmen San Diego year. Or in that was Holmes. a great show and a great trailer. I know that I already said that I picked my favorite, but now I'm already changing my mind. So we're just going to have to wait until the end of this podcast <laughs> to decide. But the Sherlock Holmes trailer, I mean, that honestly was such a, it was such an improvement from the year before. <laughs> I mean, it was still shot super shakily, but like, and you couldn't hear anything was saying. It was like, we shot outside of the Starbucks and like, did. didn't have any noise reduction or microphones. So it'd nope. be like, it would be somebody holding the camera at least 10 feet away from the table to get the whole table on the shot. And then us talking at normal speaking levels with cars going by. Like, and Maddie just could... hiding in the bushes behind us. And nobody could hear anything. <laughs> no, no, and then like, and then the joke we thought was like the joke of all jokes was that I was playing Sherlock Holmes, like Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes, and you were playing Jude Law's Watson, and we talked about how it was like Stark Industry was have like hiring us to like figure out what was going on because we were talking to Pepper Potts about it, right. and we we're just like, oh, and where is Mister Stark? She goes, oh, I haven't seen him, and I look, at, I like break the fourth wall, and then I look back at her, and it's like, oh no, yeah, I forgot that you did that too. Like that was a great trailer okay i mean there was that whole part where they're like everything's gonna be it's like the whole world's at war and it's just a bunch of explosions of like, <laughs> like a bunch of clips stuff. of like planes and trains <laughs> <laughs> yeah maddie had a good time with that one oh. but also it was really fun to shoot that i think my favorite part from that trailer was when you're across the street and like you're waving there you go walks by and you're like screaming because you're waiting for the crosswalk to turn and then i walk by and you're like she's right there and i'm like oh hello (laughs) 
no. Best part of that was every time you tried to run down the street and you couldn't run and you kept falling down and I had to fix the crotch of those pants like 70 times. I mean, I could run. I was not supposed to, though. I, like, right. had a gimp leg. Right. Not, not that it carried that, that through. That <laughs> yeah, I think it's during the show I decided that if walking was fine then. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't wait for people. I hope people go and they just watch that masquerade because you've cut that one down. It's in Cosplay Cabaret, right? Because we made fun of it. Yeah, it's Kinetic on Sherlock Holmes Mystery oh. Masquerade. That's my it's, favorite. Like, I'm going to say not my, like, my favorite masquerade, but definitely my favorite one to roast because... <laughs> I don't know. It's my favorite masquerade. I thought it was the one that we had the most fun in. Oh, I don't know. I think Avengers year was more like we had more fun at Avengers year. But I mean, like I still love like the Sherlock Holmes masquerade. But my God, every time you walk on stage with a cane and then he would read the paper and then he'd go to walk <laughs> off and just take the cane with him. like la, 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 la. Yeah. Well, it's because I try to get my ass off stage fast, even though they can't come off until I'm off the stage. Right. I don't know. Oh my god! Would, okay, but like the, the reason why... would disappear magically. Oh yeah, and except for that one time that you reminded me because you took the cane away, and then in the next shot, I pick up and like hobble off stage like a goblin. <laughs> it's true. Oh god, that oh, was a good year. Any other trailers that year? I can't remember what else was that year. Well, we there was definitely another weakest link that year, and they just reused that trailer. I think. Mm-hmm. And then we never got to see the dating game trailer ever again. That was it. Right. The dating game trailer is lost in the mist somewhere. But we still have the we, loopers for it. And that's we what didn't, matters. You see, we didn't start making a crap load of trailers until after the first two years. We were only just taking care of the dating game and the masquerade. And then like a game show. Right. <clears throat> so we had done the mystery masquerade with Sherlock Holmes. And then next, the following year, we started to do a lot more. Although... That was the year that they did Star Wars versus Star Trek, and you and I weren't in that show because there was all this drama happening behind the scenes. Right, I was supposed to be Han Solo, wasn't I? <clears throat> yeah, I don't know who I was supposed to be. They told me I was playing both Data and Spock, and I knew nothing about Star Trek. And I'm like, listen, I don't even know, know who these characters are, and I just don't have the time commitment to watch all of fucking Star Trek. <laughs> I was there was like, nothing that went on that year. You and I didn't end up hosting Masquerade, but I judged at it. Right. Oh, did I? No, you judged, and I was just there, I guess. You're, you're just in charge of everything. That's true. Well, it we was did weird. The, we did the dating game, though. What was the dating game? We had? did Buffy versus Twilight. That was it. That was the year. That Okay, that, that year had three different intro videos, because oh we God. created, like, the trailer, and then, like, we also shot another video that showed before the actual show started. Okay, so there was that year, that year was my crowning moment. Like I used to write, like rewrite songs and stuff for the show. Like we do like the parody songs. Like I rewrote the words to together again for Torchwood. I Wait, rewrote the lyrics. What, what, what did we rewrite for? I rewrote the lyrics to bad horse. Oh, that's right. It was you and Halden as um the count from Sesame street. He made a count puppet. Yes. And you guys sang the Bad Horse song. What an song. incredible show, honestly. Can we just like explain what this show was? It was a dating game. And the premise was that, okay, in the first video that was shown at the show was Dracula showing up to fa- fight Buffy for a rematch. And yep. like, and it was really fun. And then he decides that he doesn't want to be the Vampire King anymore. So it goes to the next person who goes to Edward Cullen, even though that's not who it is, because that's the twist of the show. But right. the premise is that it goes to Edward Cullen and Spike shows up. Right. And is like just being an asshole, I guess. I think he wanted to be Kane and he was just like kind of there to poke fun at you as Edward. Yeah. And that was the premise of it. And so then we had the count from Sesame Street and his job during the dating game was to count how many contestants there were every time. <laughs> what a great job. Uh and we had Willow, Buffy, and Xander yep. hunting. We had Bella, who was played by Brie, and she did a fantastic job in that. Uh, yep. Pam showed up as a... Do you remember Pam showing up as a Twilight mom? Yep. I didn't, even, I didn't even tell you that was happening. Like, we had this whole private thing planned that I was like, all right, in the middle of this scene, you're going to run out and you're going to, like, freak out and be a Twilight fan and go after Edward Cullen. And, like, we're not going to tell Katie. She just shows up and starts screaming at you. I don't even know what you made. Like, I never asked you what you thought about that. I was mortified. <laughs> I was like, what's happening? <laughs> I went with it and I, I worked with it and it was fine, but I was just like, oh my God. Oh, that was a no. good show. 
It was a but great yeah. show. Okay, wait, so in the, the trailer, though, it was like, after the trailer that I just described, the one with Dracula fighting Buffy, that was not part of the trailer. That was for the show specifically. In the trailer itself, it was like Edward getting the invitation to be Kane while right. like Bella was whining. Being, yeah. Okay, that's a funny video though, because like Bella starts freaking out. She's like, You can't, you can't leave me. And like, I think I show up and just push her out of the way. <laughs> well, no, because no, no, no. Because what happened was as you walk in, we're, I'm just literally checking the mail at Bella's house. Like, it's not even my house. And like, there's the letter there. And then as soon as I open it, you guys popped up and sang the bad horse song and then disappeared. Oh, yeah. And then she freaked out. And then you did show up again. And we're both like, What the hell are you doing here? And I remember it wasn't in the script. We just thought it was funny. Like, you just go, Banana? Because <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> the table. I'm watching okay so i'm watching it now on mute and you're right that does happen but i want to see what happens to bella because i'm pretty sure somebody pushed her off off the the scene off the camera it's okay this needs to fucking line up so i can watch this all right it's just gonna <laughs> run in the background um but this, this is the first year that we used scripts also yeah we didn't use scripts for previous trailers we just shot whatever the hell we wanted and i thought right. It worked really well because we had other, we had like multiple shots. Like we were trying to have more than one angle. Oh, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. it wasn't me. The cow pushes her off and it's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> she like literally goes flying. <laughs> it's like so funny. Oh my God. That might be the funniest thing we've ever filmed. <laughs> I told you the cow puppet was the best. And this was the year that we started caring about what was happening like with the background of us because they had that hallway that they came out of to come to Buffy's house and they green screened it to look like an empty hallway, but it was like a closet or something. No, we didn't. Yeah, you there did. Was no, there was no green screen. I, I think we just came not. out of the closet. No, they literally like they she did something and got rid of the crap that was behind them in that closet because it was full. I don't see I don't even see a closet in here. Are you sure we just are you sure we didn't just move the camera? I, I swear to God, Ryan, like it was like there was a whole scene with Buffy, Willow and Xander when they met up and like Willow and Z um, Xander came in through like a quote unquote doorway. Oh that was a closet. Goodness. Wait, I'm watching it. You're right. Yeah, it's a closet and they're just yeah. coming. You're right. They did green screen it. Yeah. What the hell? We gave what? a shit. <laughs> Suddenly okay. you well i don't know i'm watching this now and it's like the camera angle still can't manage to fit xander willow and buffy all in the same shot so buffy is like only half her face is there mm. well you know what are you gonna do <laughs> there's also a portion where they were filming you and bella freaking out and it zoomed in really close and then zoomed out real fast and like we just didn't reshoot that nah <laughs> no, that, was a, that was a tough day if i remember shooting but then oh, they never God. but then i've never made like a star trek or a star wars trailer for the masquerade like they didn't have a trailer for that that year no they did i just don't remember what it was and i don't have a copy of it so it's not on the cosplay cabaret thing and they also shot something during the convention where they were running around as those characters dancing to something i think oh. best day ever maybe no idea couldn't tell you Can't i don't remember. know i don't know um what a weird year but that show was really fun even though it fell apart at the end uh, yeah it did but that wasn't anybody's fault that was just yeah we didn't know we'll just do. let that one go so there are two other videos from that year there's drake's wheel of fortune which is us hauled in like running around in a river yep <laughs> it's drake from uncharted and then also uh ganon's power jeopardy which was me keeping maddie captive and be like you need to, you need to come and watch us play jeopardy i don't know wait hold on katie what what we okay i was hosting jeopardy right uh -huh. and like we were setting up on stage like the doors were open like the show was about to start and halden pulled up the laptop because that's the program we were running jeopardy on and halden's explaining the whole program to me and i'm hosting this by the way yeah and then he goes okay do you have any questions before we start and i go yeah i've never played jeopardy how do you play <laughs> <laughs> and he just stared at me and left <laughs> I didn't, I didn't grow up watching Jeopardy, okay? <laughs> I was like, and for some reason, I decided to do zero research. Because, <laughs> you know, why not? Oh, my God. I don't know. I mean, obviously, I figured it out. So, thank God. Yeah. You said answer it in the form of a question, man. Yeah, right? Oh, my God. Good um. God. So, the following year was the year we had the Marvel takeover, which was Avengers, the Masquerade, and then yep. also the Uncan Uncanny Dating Game. Yep. That was, Which, yeah. <laughs> that was a good year I, we, okay so we upgraded we stopped shooting in people's living rooms <laughs> yes we did we went to a park <laughs> we did okay but uh, that I always think about this because there's this place in Ada called Elm, Bl Elm Bank and it's like 
there's this giant mansion there that that's not being used and but they use the property for like um i don't know what it's called when you're taking care of like plants and flowers and stuff like that it's like this big garden basically and that's where i wanted to shoot the video and i was like you guys we have to do it here like this is the perfect spot it looks like the x mansion and we pulled in there and we couldn't use it because they were doing like an antique car show with like five thousand antique cars so we had to go somewhere else and we landed on where we landed which was like a picnic table <laughs> and a library. Yeah. I don't I don't know why we thought that was a good shot, but I mean, it just felt like it was kind of the property like where the mansion was, I guess. Like we had our like X-Men game. Yeah. And then we were in like the wooded area so it kind of looked like the gar- I don't know. I thought it might look like the gardens or whatever or like outside the mansion a little bit. Um you tripping over a log 17 times. It was not intentional. Nope. <laughs> There's a trip counter in the bloopers. <laughs> there is. Oh my um, god. But then also like us sitting next to the handicap parking sign. That was great. Dude, I don't know if that was intentional or not, but it's great. <laughs> Just you looking at it, like you acknowledge that it existed. I don't think I could see it. I don't think I, I saw that it or or maybe we did plan it. I don't remember that at all. Like we I remember it seeing because, it. Because like the part of the song oh, I also rewrote that song that year too. Um uh, what, you didn't have you know, to do much rewriting. It was pretty spot on for Xavier. It was. You and from me both me from um, Book of Mormon, but I rewrote some of the lyrics for that. Yeah. Uh, but like, there was a part in the song where I was talking about the future, and that's when you looked at it, because I was like, la, 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 and you're like, oh, shit. Okay, so we must have planned it, and I just didn't think about it. Yeah. Ever again. <laughs> Other than when we Ever shot again. that. <laughs> that but was That was fun. a good one. The big musical production number. You know what's really funny is that I remember like some of these being such such a project to shoot but like i'm thinking i'm even thinking about like the buffy stuff like we just shot that in somebody's living room the other two were like dancing yep okay but the avengers trailer was bad it was like not good <laughs> because it was we were like, in someone's backyard again I, okay no we at least with the other trailers came in with like an idea there was no idea for this we're like let's just shoot some stuff while we're in costume uh and we shot most of it in somebody's backyard, like you said, yep. like Thor's scene is just straight up in the back of some senior center. Yep. Uh, and then we were like, oh, let's go to the city. Let's drive into Boston, which opposite of New York, by the way, like you drive into Boston and like there's nobody in Boston. What was with that? That was weird, right? Like, no, we it Boston. wasn't weird. Everybody was at Pride. Oh, shit. Why, everybody, why didn't we go to Pride as the Avengers? What's because wrong with we us? we didn't realize it until, like, we were getting ready to leave. And we're like, what is all that noise? And then we saw, like, the rainbows everywhere. And it was like, what's oh. wrong with us? We still should have walked over. It's us. Everybody there was gay. I know. And, that well, the bus of people enjoyed us. And they were probably all coming from Pride. Yeah, they probably thought that we were coming for Pride, too. We're like, yeah. Like, what was that random office building we went to? I don't even remember where that was. Like, we that know, it's a, It was a place that Halden was working at, so we utilized their conference room. Gotcha. This is what I'm talking about. This is what, at the beginning of this podcast, I was like, I cannot commit, like, I cannot commit myself to cons like I used to because we voluntarily are like, oh, Pride's happening. Sorry, we got to go shoot this video. Like, what? <laughs> it's not what I would do now. I'd be like, fuck that. I'm going to go to Pride. Right. <laughs> wow. I forgot about that. But yeah, we were at, we were filming in Boston during Pride. Because we... that was the year that I got on the train to go to my sister's house after um, from Boston and um, proceeded to be on a train full of drag queens. I mean, you dressed were... Dressed as t- Tony Stark. I was going to say, you were also in drag. I was. Yeah. <laughs> and they loved me and I loved them. Yeah, it was good. Uh, do you remember when we were shooting that, though, before we even went into the city, we were like at Katie's house where we yep. shot a lot of our trailers uh, and there were kids next door that legitimately thought that we were like the actual Avengers. Yes, they did. <laughs> yeah. It was adorable. It was, you guys were having a good time. And I was like, I don't know what to do about this. Like <laughs> they kept up being like, we were missing somebody though. I forget who we were missing. Were we? No, we were there. I don't think we're missing the Hulk. Oh, well we didn't have a Hulk. That's right. Yeah. They people kept on asking where the Hulk there. was. Right. Uh, I don't know what you guys told him. It was I just I was just like you. You think that he's safe to have around here? Like I did it like so dry. Tony Stark. I was like mostly just like ah children, and also like nope, I gotta be Tony Stark. Very dry. Yeah, I didn't. I luckily I didn't have to interact with the children because none of them who knew who Bree and I were. They're like we don't know who those other two characters are: Blackwood and Hawkeye. <laughs> right, and Anna was uh, Captain America. Yeah, 
I think you guys did a good job at interacting with the kids. Yeah. That was cute. Yeah. They were and then cute. we then we walked down the street and we're like, this is our final shot, everyone. But see, the neighbor was useful with the children because we entertained their child and then he let us use his cop car. That's true. And by use, we I can't let's clarify because everyone's probably like, whoa, you get to go in a cop car. No, we got to stand in front of it. Still <laughs> yeah. He, we just we we couldn't shoot the license plate, so we had to shoot it from the side. Right, but we did like the cool poses in front of it. Yeah, exactly. I like the bloopers from that year the best, though. Me too. That, I mean, I like the bloopers from every year. They're all real fun. Mm-hmm. All I remember from the Avengers year is that, like, when we were shooting the video in the office where we were supposed to e- explain what the plot line was, we didn't fucking shoot any of that. We just shot us doing a bunch of random shit, and then, like, I had to, like, piece it together, and it was, like, nothing. And I remember my ex at the time being like, who wrote the script for this? And I was like, there wasn't a script. And he goes, it shows. <laughs> I didn't think it was that bad. It felt like a random movie trailer to me, where it's just like random scenes from like no context. <laughs> well, there were also there were also scenes that I cut in from. Okay, so we made other videos that year because it was this whole vote for Captain America or vote, vote for Skeletor thing. So we made videos for those two that we utilized as marketing material for the convention and for the masquerade. Mm-hmm. And I remember taking some of that footage and just slipping in there. It's like. This works, right? Okay. <laughs> it's like I'm like, we need footage from somewhere. I'll just pull it from here. It was just funny to me because it was Captain America versus Skeletor, and the whole time I played Tony Stark bitter that we didn't say that it should have been Tony like running against him. They're like, no, nobody would have voted for you, and the audience was just like, <laughs> <laughs> that was also um, the masquerade where we had the magical girl staff that I caught, and it looked it was fucking epic. <laughs> that was incredible. Like, I forget who threw it to me, and the way I caught it was just like, whoop, magical girl. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. That was the year that I was playing Hawkeye, and I was under Skeletor's spell to give him blowjobs or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And this incredible PG-13 masquerade. Yep. yep. That was, and you know what? kicked your ass and made you remember yourself. That was also the first year I ever had heat stroke in my entire life. Oh. When we were shooting the Avengers thing. And it's me, you know, I, I, okay, for everybody who's listening, I like it when it's like 105 degrees outside. I'm a weirdo. Um, but we were doing it, we were shooting this when it was like 90 degrees at least. And I was wearing like all leather mm-hmm. and then kept on being like, why do I feel so dizzy? And then I changed and I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. I was in I was like overheating. a full, like, full suit. Seriously. You weren't wearing leather though. I was. It was not. It was not a good call. It I'm looked cotton. cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, that's the way cosplayers should do things. It's like I cosplayed freaking Axel from Organization 13 and never learned my lesson that that's a hot thing to wear in the middle of the summer is leather. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Man, we're going to do, do a convention like the very end of July, beginning of August. Guess I should wear my leather outfit. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, my God. Okay, so there were a couple other videos. There was Let's Make a Deal with Archer, which is Maddie Gita and I doing just some Archer shit in a Kineticon bit break room. But that actually worked for once. That actually and I feel like, like that was one of my favorite trailers. Like, if we're talking, like, that was not a Masquerade or Dating Game trailer. I love the the Archer year. Yeah, although we, like, could have done with a couple more perspectives. Because it's, like, one shot for the entire trailer. Um, and then, I do like this one, too. We did uh, a Pokemon cosplay chess thing that mm-hmm. Jess was directing. And it had... Lindsay and Dave doing fire spinning as Zuko yep. and Roy Mustang. Right, right, right. And they were like the Pokemon trainers. And that that was a fun trailer, too. That was a good trailer. That's it. That's all I got on that. The Skeletor <laughs> throwing stuff. Yeah, I get that too. Boobs! You're all boobs! Oh, God. No. The, 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 go and watch the bloopers for that, because you can watch um, Skeletor motorboat uh, Natasha Romanoff. I mean, didn't we all want to see, do that to Natasha Romanoff? And I'm gay. <laughs> You're all boobs. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. I'm just like, oh my god. Uh, and then, and so that's the thing. We showed that at the end of the masquerade, and no one said anything about that. But hi, Maddie, just no, making well, that's a, point, a, a like job in That's like the least amount of like harassment people were experiencing at a convention back then. Anyway, <laughs> like, right? Honestly, like, eh. and we're friends. Like, we were having a good time. Okay, right. so do, do you want to talk about the stuff that you're excited to talk about? Because like the last two years we were filming stuff. The last like, two years were I, I got I wrote the scripts for the last two years that we did masquerade. We also like I don't know if we changed equipment or just tried to give a shit a little bit more, but like the the suddenly the camera angles were really fucking nice and like we were shooting a little bit more professionally. I just uh, 
it, it was like those were probably like the two i mean of, of the years that we did like as far as trailer goes i feel like those had the best like quality i guess yeah i think i don't i was gonna say we got a new video camera but i don't think we did no i think we just started giving a shit because <laughs> people gave a shit we we're like oh maybe we should make these a little bit nicer yeah i mean well, i think that's a that's what we did was, um but what was the dating game for the lord of the rings year um that was your favorite one of all time oh supernatural <laughs> <laughs> oh which one we did it's like yeah it's super oh my god the supernatural year was, that was so the good. show that got us like that got a bigger turnout than the masquerade itself yeah it was, a, was, it was a full room it was crazy it was people were well that's because supernatural fans are nuts man i know i didn't realize i mean i knew i liked the show and everything people liked it but i didn't realize until we like the thing is i didn't realize it is like with the way that before we get into what the trailer was, it's like we had stationed ourselves in the middle of the room because when the trailer ended, it was going to come up because we had been teleported to Kineticon at the end of the trailer. And Ryan and I had snuck out into the crowd while the room was still loading and we got talking because we were talking about different things. And we didn't realize how full the room was until the lights came up in the entire room. <laughs> and we were literally surrounded. It was like, oh. Oh, no. If you watch that video, it's great. Because like... As soon as the lights come out, the shrill screams, like, and I can't even say that it was like just girls because it was definitely boys too. It was like, oh, yeah. it was like a shrill. It, I can't even. It was deafening. And we got sh- we got chased on stage because we asked some people on the way in, like, "Hey, do you want to be in this for five seconds?" And okay, chase it's like you, stage. like, okay, you were on the way, and you're like, oh, "I found a couple of, like supernatural cosplayers here." Before we knew, found out that like the entire crowd was supernatural cosplayers. Right. right. <laughs> But the trailer was good. The only thing that makes me sad about that trailer, <laughs> we filmed that trailer and like we found it's the gorgeous. perfect spot. We found the perfect spot to film it after we argued about what the perfect spot was because I wanted you guys to come to New Hampshire because okay. I wanted you to film at that. Okay. Box that was like, I've got a better spot for you. And I took you to like the high school parking lot and you're like, mm-hmm. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> yeah. I was like, nope, this is an empty hot. I, I was went across the street to that sand lot. I was like, this is better. Right. Yeah. Because, well, we, I was like, Give me another location. I'm like, well, there's this other parking lot, but I don't think it really works. And we went in, it was like a sand lot full of like construction stuff. And you're like, Ryan, really? <laughs> like, I hate you. But you're my God. So we filmed it and we filmed like, we filmed through like different like, like tubes and things that they had there. Like we filmed from the woods out. Like, yeah. we filmed all over that place. We didn't turn the microphone on. Nope. Nope. We didn't at all. And, I don't know and why. Didn't realize it until we were leaving. Um, so then we had to like do voiceovers that yep. were not very good. No, but it worked. It did. Joe it did. Was perfect. I'm watching it now with the sound off, and I actually think it looks pretty good. Like we did opening credits and stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a good show. That fucking wig, though, man. Oh. <laughs> just the thing. It's like our bloopers for it. If we had sound to it, all you would have heard was people like, Ryan, stop touching your hair. Ryan, stop touching your hair. Ryan, stop touching your hair. It was in my face, okay? I you made me wear this wig that was like a beautiful wig. <laughs> it was like lawn I think you were and flowing. wearing it wrong, weren't you? Because you wore it for the whole show and it was fine. I think you didn't have it like on your head right or something. No, I don't think we trimmed it down yet. I think we did some trimming to it after <sighs> this. But it was, but that's one of my favorite. I'm, I'm going to say it right now. That one is probably my favorite trailer that we ever filmed. I just think it looks really nice. It looks like an episode. I also, we're both trying to play it straight. You do a better job than I do. Although yeah. I don't, I'm not convinced that Ding Winchester is straight. Just throwing that out there. But as you listen, when you like spend that much time to do like the macho masculine, I like women thing. It's like, mm, if you have to state it that many times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. But like, if you watch me in this though, like I. There's like a shot where you're telling me to do something and I roll my eyes and I walk away trying to play it straight and I'm doing such a strut. It just looks like I'm doing drag. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny. I'm like not capable of being straight. I'm sorry. So there was the supernatural year and that was also the first time that we ever took. Well, not the first time ever because we did. Captain well, Captain America, Avengers, and Skeletor, but like a for like a full on like collision of like genres. Yeah, that was our first year doing that, and I mixed. We got so much words. freaking slack about that. <laughs> there were people that are like, I don't understand why these two things are together. I'm like, can you just enjoy the show? Because it's not actually about us; it's about the people performing. <laughs> right, right. Like we're just doing this to be dicks. Like <laughs> we're having a good time. Lord of the Rings. 
Lord of the Rings, and Hunger Games. I thought it made sense, honestly. Like, so what basically the premise was is that PETA and Katniss are stuck in the Hunger Games, and where the Hunger Games are being held is Middle Earth. Yep. Yep. So in the midst of this, like, they find the One Ring, and you've got Legolas and Aragorn and Gimli trying to find Frodo to, um, you know, get the One Ring back and, like, give it to Frodo so he can return it to Mordor. Um, and it's basically, like, a clash of differences. <laughs> Yep, yep. It was good. I liked it. I, I, we shot this one in the woods, too. We did. We shot it in the woods. We were rolling around in the dirt to make ourselves more authentic. There's a blooper of that. There is. Carp, carp. My, favorite, saw... my favorite blooper from that, though, is when, like, Halden was, like, walking down the street when we were going in. I was just like, Mordor? Mordor? <laughs> Thumbing it? Oh, that's pretty funny. I, I was going to say my favorite is when I was uh, looking at myself in the, like, Palm Pilot mirror. <laughs> Oh. And not, not, I'm not saying that that's that's why. It's because Halden was behind me imitating me and I had no idea. And like, <laughs> Melissa was losing her shit. <laughs> She's like, that and, um, that and when you got your hair stuck, actually stuck in the tree, it was supposed to be a joke. And you were like, guys, I really. Stuck. I was like, guys, the wig's going to rip off. And Chess is like, are you for real right now? <laughs> <laughs> Which, in fact, everyone, we only did me getting stuck in a tree because back in the day, Jess, Halden, and I played Guild Wars 2 and Guild Wars all the time together. And for whatever reason, I would glitch out and get stuck in a tree. And like, it became a runny joke that we had to put it in there. And when we were casting this show, because it was a different cast initially. And then since we that cast didn't work out, Katie was like, okay, can you play Legolas? I was like, yeah. And I'm like, this is perfect. We're just going to do what we do in Guild Wars. Except now we're like actually in costume. And it was fantastic. Yeah. And it just, it, I don't know. It just, it was funny. And like, not to really, like, not to spoil it. Cause I mean, I want people to watch it too, but I mean, the ending for it, it just, we did a, we did a whole spoil it. it was like 10 years ago. It's like, if you don't know what happens and it's online to watch, there's well, no, I like to think that some people don't come to New England shit. and see Kineticon. Like they never saw it before. Listen, but. our trailers are absolutely famous. And I, I can't think of a one person on the entire planet earth who hasn't seen these. I can. <laughs> <laughs> Because he's like, it was me. Um. <laughs> right. And I can think of a lot. But yeah, like, so basically, we did a whole like song number because PETA wanted to ask Katniss to marry him. And at the end of the musical number, and Katniss is on stage and is like, what the hell is going on? And I whip out a ring and I propose. And Katniss is like, is that the one ring? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. That show is like bonkers. Because also, like, Jarvis was playing both Frodo and I forget what's his face from uh, Hunger Games. What's his name? Do you know? Uh, Oh, he's uh, like the like a can- crane crane. Thank like crane. you. And it turned out it's just Frodo had been so messed up by by putting on the ring too many times that he was like creating a split personality where he was also crane. Yep. Jarvis fell off the stage. Yep. He sure did. <laughs> he just like rolled right off. Oh, my God. What a good show. Everyone go watch that show. I recently rewatched it because I wanted to and I was laughing and I had forgotten that we that like, well, uh seating was happening i created um seating videos that went on for like 10 15 minutes and i was like man that, first of all like can't believe i donated that much time to creating seating videos secondly it was like pretty funny to rewatch because it was like cheer for your favorite thing and so it would be like katniss versus lara croft because people were complaining or comparing those two characters at the time um and uh i don't know who we put against we did like legolas versus hawkeye versus green arrow i think the seating for that was such a nightmare, though. That's the one, like, we've talked about it before, that the seating for that took so long because the fire department didn't, like I said, there was too many people in the building and they could only let so many people upstairs at a time to be seated for it. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. So that was one of my, like, one of the best years, but it's so, like, it took us forever to get the well, room seated. They lined, they lined everybody up in the parking garage, which, by the way, wasn't near anywhere near the masquerade hall. Nope. It was like honestly, like across the convention center, through the hotel, down three stories, in the back of that lot. It was like a ten to fifteen minute walk. Yep, that yeah. was really stupid. And like all I remember is like we were sitting back there waiting and waiting and waiting. And like at one point, we looked at the time. We're like, they're literally not going to let us stay in the convention center after this point. And Katie, you were like, "All right, we're just doing it this way. Uh, here's what we're cutting from the show. We're just going <laughs> to bang right through it." uh and we did we blew through that show in like in an hour and a half it was pretty impressive we did shortest masquerade ever 
and it was awesome. That was it. It was after that year that Halden was like, "Yeah, we're just gonna keep the masquerade room open." And I was like, "But what about the secrets?" And Halden's like, "Okay, but like nobody's gonna be there for the show if we don't do it this way. So it just needs to be open room at all times." Right. I was like, "Fine." So sure. we got we we deteriorated the lines after that. We did. Oh, okay, but what I was gonna say about like about the cheer for your thing? Eventually, it said PETA. And I was like, who are we going to compare PETA to? And then it said versus PETA bread. Yeah. <laughs> I laughed really hard rewatching that. And then I started watching the show and I was laughing. Like, it's funny. And it made me forget. It made me mad because we had a sound cue for when fucking Aragorn and Legolas and Gimli showed up. But like it, the, the sound cue didn't happen, but it's supposed to be the Charlie's Angels theme. Oh, you mean they messed up a sound cue? That's weird. Yeah, I know. That never happened at Kineticon. They did get better over time, but man, confused. <laughs> uh, so Definitely, we just we never had anybody working there that had like actual theater experience, and that's what we needed. Mm-hmm. Like we needed somebody who had experience with stage management or like any kind of cue at all, and we're just like, just play the cue. We didn't even give them that many. No. Hey, at least they played the song. They did eventually. That's now stuck in my head because I'm thinking about it. <laughs> You uh, got the one. one thing. Rosa still can't hear that song without laughing. I want to point out, like anytime it's that a, comes on the radio, anything she just busts out. You know what? I think everyone used to go watch this. It's called Kineticon Hunger Games Masquerade. The trailers are in there. The previews are in there. The show is in there. It's a good time. When we do our dance, I remember Jess and I were fighting in the background, and I went to like grab her wig and like almost ripped it off her face. And she's like, "Dude, what are you doing?" <laughs> No, no. <laughs> wait, wait. That trailer. This was your idea. Please take credit for this. But when we were showing like Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli for the first time, it was like I forget what the line was. Aragorn's like, "We'll do this," and then like Legolas is like, "And we'll do this." And then we made Jess get down on her knees. So it was just her head in the same shot. Like, and she's like, "Am I axe?" It's so funny. <laughs> What? I may just be like as low as possible every time they film it's next like to each other. It's like the funniest shit because it's like I, I, it's like the same shot every time, but like mm-hmm. we just it would cut to somebody else standing there, and when it got to Jess, it was like just her forehead. Yep, <laughs> it was really funny. Katie, you have good ideas. <laughs> Did we film any other trailers for that year? I don't remember. Um, no, that was the year that I was. I had, I had boosted up to VP, so I wasn't in cosplay HQ all the time. So we were creating other videos for Kineticon because, like, at that point, they wanted to utilize what we were doing in cos like cosplay HQ with other events. So we we did oh, so create weird because wait, you mean something worked? How weird! I know, but who gets credit for it? Not us. No, nope. uh, we did create the do's and don'ts of conventions, which you didn't, you weren't part of. But I still think it's a solid video that. I was hoping at the time would like somehow go viral because it was really important. Like it actually, it was funny. It was Holden as Deadpool mm-hmm. being an obnoxious con goer and like a voiceover being like, Oh wait, you can't do that. It, it like, so that we covered like not sleeping in the hallways or sitting in front of doorways or jumping on people and making sure you eat enough food and wearing enough uh, like deodorant. Like it was like all these like basics um, and about like not cutting lines. I just, I felt like it was a really good video and it is really funny to rewatch. I say the next year, the lot, our last year, um, had the most videos in it and we still didn't ever see all of those videos again. What are you talking um, about? Like the, the, well, we'll get into it, but like all the, the catapult videos we filmed at con and like the whole first con in forever video that magically vanished. Oh, Right. Well, we'll save Catapult for another year. I mean, another yeah. year. Another, another year. episode. I really want us to get Jess on this show and have us have like a Catapult reunion. I know. We'll get there. We'll get there. I know we will. Yeah. Well, um, maybe now that our child is like no longer a baby. Like that was the reason <laughs> before. She's like, I really don't have time to record because like baby. And we're like, mm. okay, fine. Seems fine. legit. <laughs> <laughs> fine. Whatever. No, the last year. And it was funny because I had to fight for the dating game theme but i didn't have to fight for the theme to the masquerade um well, that's because we we didn't have like god this annoys me so the year that we did the glee dating game it's not that it was a bad idea i just was like do we have anything that's a little bit more relevant and we couldn't think of anything um and it was a good idea and i like that we did it but i could you couldn't convince me and then eventually one day i had a dream and i was like katie i had a dream that we mm. did the glee dating game and it worked and you're like mm-hmm. so can we do it i was like um, also like to point out that was our second most popular dating um dating game 
like room full. Was it really? It was like the room was remember. almost full again for that dating game. I don't know. Like that was. I don't really know anything about Glee. People I made watched... signs for us, Ryan. Did they really? <laughs> oh my god, Glee! It was like wait, yeah. Wait, people brought signs. Yeah. Where was I? I don't know, but they, where there were signs, like one of the people, like in the crafts department, like they had like big poster boards that they had made, and people had signed them and everything else all day. Like we love Curtin Blaine, Burt Curtin Blaine forever. Like, Man, and I was getting I ready to do the show, this. and they came up to us and presented them to us, so people were holding them up in the audience. I was just like there, I guess. I don't remember people holding it. Okay, well, I didn't. This is back before we were contacts. Remember, we did shows without contacts. Blind, yes. For many years. I don't know why we just didn't get contacts. I wear them now and they're fantastic. <laughs> it's great. I love being able to see. Yeah. That, I mean, like Buffy dating game when I'm sitting there screaming, where's Buffy? And she's like right next to me. And I just couldn't see her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the fun story, not to divert from what we're talking about, but this year working masquerade anime Boston got out. It was a long night. I didn't get back to the hotel room probably till about 1230. Everybody was asleep. Go into the bathroom to get ready for the night so I can go to bed after like a 70 hour day. Right. Yeah. And I go and I pop the first contact out of my eye and I go to get the second one and I can't get it and I can't get it and I can't get it. And now I'm having like a panic attack in the bathroom going, where is it? Like, and I'm like, in my head, I'm going, if it was behind my eye somehow, like it had slipped back somehow, (laughs) I would be in the worst pain of my life. Also, I can't do that. Well, no, but they can slide around and get stuck places like in your eye. Oh, yeah, it's happened to me. You just keep on blinking right. and then you grab but it. It hurts like a motherfucker. It's like, okay, so it's, it's I don't know if it's like, and then I'm like, oh my God, my eyes are so dry right now. Like, is it just like stuck on my eye? And I is can't. Is this going to be a story where you reveal that you weren't actually wearing the contact? No, it fell out. Where? Uh, at, at Masquerade, I'm assuming. Like, I had like watery eye and I must have like wiped it right out of my eye and I didn't but realize it. Did you it, not see it... out of one eye that whole well, time? No, because my eyesight's not that bad. And I didn't oh. lose it in the eye with the stigmatism. So it really didn't like affect anything. <laughs> That's so funny. If I like drop one contact, I just can't see. I'm done. Yeah, no, like it really didn't. <laughs> it it wasn't bad enough that I obviously didn't notice. But like it took me a half an hour to realize that it just was not in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, man, I miss going to cons with you. Those were a good time. <laughs> I like, I, like, panic attack. I'm like, oh, where listen, I like the years that you and I would go to cons together and we'd stay in a room with just us. And then sometimes we'd have a third person and usually that person would leave because they didn't want to deal with you and me anymore. Mm-hmm. Those were good years. Yeah. Well, anyway, we weren't wearing contacts with this show. So right. and I can't see anybody in that- Wait, what? The sound cue is late, but that was the trailer. I don't remember that either. That was, those are the two best trailers, period. Oh, yeah, Period. 100%. Well, the Glee one is just beautiful if you watch it. Oh, it's God, yeah. It's because Kristen did it in a shot the shopping mall one. area. Like, we had people involved. We were trying to be, like, in New York. It wasn't very New York, but it was the best we could do. Well, no, because we were still in Ohio. Oh, right, right. Okay, fair. We weren't in New York yet, so it could have counted for, like, outdoor somewhere oh, it's in Ohio. Everyone now. <laughs> you know, okay, you know what, what changed is that in those last two years, Kristen started shooting stuff for us, and she had been she went to freaking broadcasting school so she actually knew how to set up a shot better than anybody else did like i knew how to set up shots but i was in all the shots so it's not like i could sit there and film it right (laughs) it was like exactly you know Um, and that harry potter trailer who oh that or is that good or bad you're snapping i'm like what are we snapping at oh no no it was literally like we had kids we had a yard like there was like a whole house scene okay you say that as if we didn't be in someone's house oh my god that was that was crazy that even worked out because we shot it at Kristen's house and Mm -hmm. like her dad lived there but her dad was not there that day right for whatever reason and i was like thank god (laughs) There was but, like people sh- people on staff brought their kids over to play our children. Like we had a whole <laughs> dining room scene that we filmed. Like I think I shot that one. I think I shot that whole You did cuz cuz Draco wasn't in it. He so wasn't in it. That. Yeah. Like, the hallway that was like the dead bodies that turned into just me. That was really good too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You were being haunted by that stuff. Yep. This yep. is a totally like off like story concept too like so it was like these characters as adults which we've never actually seen before right so it was like just our own interpretation of what would have happened in the harry potter world yeah basically we kind of we did our own uh we did our own au <laughs> i mean it was good though it was kind of like mad men though where everybody was miserable with their lives yeah 
oh god trying to hermione because dan was such a big guy and like oh we god. made hermione be giving him potions so that he <laughs> that was awful he look more handsome quote unquote well we didn't know what to do with it because like he was so muscular yeah like, and I don't know, like, could we not cast anybody that wasn't? Were we just out of oh, actors? No, like, we just didn't have, like, well, not that we didn't have other options. We were just like, I just think it's funny. Like, we have Ron be like this, like, big guy, like, big muscular man. He's flexing like, those how? muscles. Oh right. my god! How? And it's like we'll write it in somehow, and I just ended up making it like money by like, the way what? somehow. The Hogwarts reunion's coming up, and I wanted you to look good. Oh my god! It was. I mean, it was really fun. I, I mean, I could have done with all of the children, but that's just me. I don't like kids, so. <laughs> it was fine. We needed them there for, like, the moment because it, it, we all had, we knew they had kids at that point. So it's like, We did. Right. We did. Those were the only two trailers you made for that, though. There was a bunch of other, like, stuff I had to create for Kinetic. Well, there was the itself. Doctor Who you guys did. Yeah, that was me and Kristen hanging out. Wasn't that was the last, that was the last time year? I was Jack. Yeah. Wait, what? Wasn't there a Battleship trailer that year? Yes. Okay, but it's not on here because the battleship trailer was also the pilot for Catapult. Ah. Uh, okay. okay let, let me at least explain what Catapult is. Catapult was like a web because this is when the YouTube started to take off and yep. like the idea of web series was a thing. Yep. And so we created a web series for Kineticon, which was about Kineticon's top secret like agency that was doing all the behind the scenes work. Yep. And. They we used that concept for the cosplay battleship thing because we didn't know what else to do. Um, right. and we were when well, we were given the idea to green light like our web series, we were like, Well, we already have these three characters that are established as part of like the top secret Kineticon base, so like, why don't we just spin off of that? But those characters are drastically different then, like, yeah, it wasn't the characters that they ended up being, right. And it turned into like this whole like web series that again we'll talk about someday. Someday we'll get into. Um, yeah. But I was Agent Fame because I was in charge of all the masquerade and the dating games and all that stuff. And Ryan was Agenta. And it's A. It's Agenta. <laughs> Agenta. <laughs> it was just it was like one of those like random things I have to go back to Connecticut for to film every once in a while. I wasn't in it as much as everybody else because they were right down there. I think I was in it. Tw- twice because i filmed like that one episode and then three i was times. there for like the finale yeah no you were there for three there was three episodes i rewatched the whole thing recently there was the one there was one that was just about you and like you in your connie mystery right and then then you appeared again in two different scenarios in the same uh, no you actually appeared in two more episodes but like we shot them all in the same day so like it to you it seems like one day but there was like one day where you were playing uh Oh my god, Alpha, because Halden couldn't make it. So you came in and pretended that you were being Alpha in disguise as fame. And then That's Right. Actually, we were filming the cosplays not consent video that day, and I was dressed like Blaine. Right. And you also then were um Oh wait, I guess that's the same episode, but then later on when all the we were hiring the villains and there were like the villain triads there, you came in as fame. Yep. So you were in actually a bunch of episodes. Oh yeah, I just pfft. Again, it's been a minute since I've watched it. I'm like, I guess I wasn't in more well, that's, than I that's a That's a story for a different time. Today we're talking about the cosplay trailers that we shot for Kineticon. Um, we are. And they were all magical in their own respect. But I guess going back to our question from like an hour ago, my favorite. It's probably the Lord of the Rings year. I thought you were going to say Supernatural. No, I mean, honestly, like that was okay. Supernatural was my favorite dating game one. I was going to say, pick a dating. All right. Pick your favorite dating game trailer and pick your favorite masquerade even trailer. Though, even though we had to dub it over, it was Supernatural. And then pick your least favorites of the two. My that's least hard, that's favorite? Harder. That's my harder because we enjoyed it. of the dating game. Okay. Favorite was Supernatural. Least favorite was the Torchwood one. Sorry. Well, just because it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> it's so bad. You know what, Ryan? You know what? That's the one we should remake. Yeah, I mean that would be really fun. Well, after like how many years it's been, like just the no, anniversary it's, edition, it's we just fun. remake no, no, no. that. We have that to trailer. find it. We have to find a con that needs a dating game. We'll take it over one year, and we're going to oh, redo no, the I whole thing. No, no, I'm not talking about a con. I'm just talking about we just remake it for the hell of it. That's fine too, but I just think it'd be funny if we did like the full thing and then like, actually film it this time. <laughs> nah. <laughs> also, torture is not relevant anymore. Like, I, it'd be funny if anybody. I mean, people listening to this know who Jack Hart of oh, Jack Hart. Oh, wow. we got married! <laughs> oh my god, it's finally happened. <laughs> Jack Harkness, not Jack Hart. Uh, All my dreams. 
I mean, some people know more about it, but like at the time, Torchwood and Doctor Doctor Who was huge. It's not that way now. I mean, it's still big, but not like it was in 2010. Right. And then let's see. My favorite masquerade was the best eh, favorite masquerade trailer was definitely. Um, well, I want to say the Hunger Games year, but it's like the Harry Potter one was so like on point. So I want to say it's a tie between the two. And I know that's a cop out, but I think it was definitely a tie between the last two are my favorites. I think if you have to choose between them, it should be the Hunger Games Lord of the Rings one. Okay. <laughs> well, no, you're right. Here's the thing, though. It's like what we shot was good, but how I edited it was not good. <laughs> I mean, I just, I don't know. Like, there's just something so crisp about the Harry Potter one. Yeah, exactly, because in the Lord of the Rings one, it's like, there was like that alarm clock noise going off in it. Right. <laughs> like countdown. It was like, oh my god, no, no, no. The, the blooper with friggin' Sam dead on the ground and Jarvis taking the selfie. <laughs> okay, but the bloopers are just good. I think the bloopers are better than the trailers, honestly. Those are my favorite, those are my favorite bloopers, period. Okay. Well, you didn't um, pick a least favorite masquerade. Oh, least favorite masquerade video. Sure. Well, again, did we, did we like, have one for you? Like, I mean. Okay. Katie's like, my least favorite one was the Star Wars versus Star Trek one that we were. Yeah, that in. one was the worst. No, <laughs> honestly, I guess worst was the Avengers one. Yeah. But again, yeah. it was fun to make. And I think it, for what it is, we I love it. But it, like, it was not the best trailer. I mean, like. The thing that I love about watching these, like, it's usually the blooper reels because I just remember how much fun we were having. And, like, truly, like, even with the shows themselves, it's like, even if they, like, fell apart or whatever, or, you know, when I miss cons and stuff and how stressful some of it was, I, like, I also will look back and be like, but we're having such a good time. Like, right. That's what you actually matters. I you don't can know. Tell that we had a good time. We did. Uh, Ryan, uh, thanks so much for coming on. This was awesome. Thank you. I wouldn't yeah. have been able to do this by myself. It would have been like a 10 minute episode. Because you don't care about which ones are my favorites and least favorites, but fine. All right, go ahead. Well, I don't even know now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Look, okay, okay. So, favorite dating game. I'm, I'm actually going to surprise you. And I'm going to say the Supernatural one because I think it was the best shot one. Really? Yeah. I know. We had the same one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, least favorite? Like, Least favorite of the dating games? Oh, mm. God. Well, <laughs> I want to say the one that we can't watch anymore because it's just gone and gone forever. The one with like the Futurama one. Because I feel like everything with the future, Futurama is my favorite show, but for some reason that show we made like just ha- we lost the video. The show had to end unexpectedly. I don't know. Cursed. Yeah. Uh, so, But does that count? Can we not count that one? No, you can count that. That's fine. Okay. I'm going to say that one just because, like, it was shot mostly in the stairwell. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, but you're right that, like, the Torchwood one's pretty bad. Okay, favorite masquerade, though. This one's tough because we have, if we're going based on, like, what looks good versus, like, what I enjoy doing. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go with surprising you, actually. I'm going to go with the Sherlock Holmes ones. I actually really enjoyed that trailer, like, okay. a lot okay it's it's terrible Mm -hmm. you can't hear a damn thing right but it's really funny and i think that you and i as those characters worked really well especially in that trailer and that like it was just really funny like there's a parts of it where sherlock holmes comes in and finds deadpool like playing uno with carmen san diego or something and then she like (laughs) runs away like it's just very funny it's like very cheeky and i think that it deserves more credit than it gets. That's okay. what I feel like. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, least favorite one? Um, what was the one that you said you didn't like? I think we were both on that. Oh, Avengers. Yeah. It just was like, not about anything. Right. <laughs> Honestly, oh. watching the bloopers for that is better because it's just kind of like us in character walking around Boston being sassy. Yep. yep. Pretty much. <laughs> All right. There you go. Those are my there favorites. There go. There we go. There, there it is. Greatest hits. <laughs> yeah. Guys, make sure you listen to um, Ryan's podcast, Mutant Ages. It's awesome, especially if you love the X-Men as much as Ryan does, but I don't think anybody loves X-Men as much as Ryan does. Well, except for me and my co-host, Maddie. Maybe, but I think it's like a close second. <laughs> yeah, Maddie doesn't have X-Men tattoos. I do. There's, there's that. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much for coming on today. I appreciate it. Uh, of course. This has been awesome. Anytime. 
at some point we will talk catapult now that we've enticed everyone about what the hell we're talking about. Yeah, we just we have to get Jess here. Jess has to be here. That's going to be like a two hour episode. It is because it's going to be mostly her reining us in. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it'd be funny if we could get Kristen and Halden on there, but I don't know if that that would just be insane. Oh, my God. And Eric. You know we could oh drink God. big. You never know. Anything's possible. Wouldn't that be great if we had like a six person reunion podcast on here? Yeah. Actually, that would be really fun. I can do it. Yeah. Bet. <laughs> all right. You know what? It's it's now set in stone. All six of us are going to come back and all six of us are going to be on the show together. <laughs> it's true. I'm going to make it happen. I'm, yeah. I'm well, going to mess with people. That's how it works. Here. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, make sure to like and comment and subscribe and share with your friends. And if you have any stories, please get a hold of us. And we'd love to have you on the show because we love hearing stories. And we love people. You. Hmm? Well, I was saying we love you to the listeners. You like, do. What? I mean, I do. Who? I do love listeners. I have listeners, which is amazing. More than just my friends, because I think I only have like 20 friends. So, yay. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. Kitty knows uh, everyone. I know that. Listen to the podcast anyways. Thanks, guys. Have a great night. Bye. Bye.